conditions and the environment the dog, the dog is in. Um, it really doesn't matter on the, the type or breed of dog. If the dog isn't, for example, exercised properly, or isn't given the right stimulation, or you know, even the right diet, diet or the right treatment by a vet, that dog can be aggressive, or a dog can just be having a bad day. What kind of injuries have you seen in your work? It's anything from, you know, a tip of a finger being bitten as um, a hand goes through a post box to I've got one client who has lost their nose because a, a, a dog has been bent over just reached them a bit. Um, I've got several clients who are having to have reconstructive surgery on, on their lips because they've lost lips because of some injuries. And it's not just banned dogs that you're seeing injuries from? No, I think it's any type of dog that can, that can cause an injury. And, you know, dogs' mouths are, are full of bacteria. And when they bite, they can cause not just a, a kind of clean wound, like if you put yourself with a knife, but really ragged wounds that can cause nerve damage and, and muscle damage. And even a, a, a fairly simple um, bite can lead to someone having to have a certain level from the general anaesthetic to offer it in Now, we are a nation of, of dog lovers and animal lovers, so uh, a lot of people listening to this will be thinking, but, you know, dogs are great. Uh, how serious a problem do you think this is? I, I think it's it's really a, a very serious problem. I mean, dogs are great, and they they, they offer companionship uh, and, and you know a great deal of, of, of love and entertainment for many people and families across the country. But the issue here is people knowing and having the knowledge um, of how to, to properly care for a dog and, and bring it up in such ways so that these attacks don't happen. Here's McNally, thank you very much. Two health trusts in Norfolk have been severely criticised by the Health Service Ombudsman over their treatment of a vulnerable man. Stephen Foster went to the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital because he was feeling suicidal. He waited 16 hours before he was assessed by a mental health nurse. He was discharged days later and was found dead in the hotel room is outside the hospital now. Alex. Well, David, Stephen Foster came to the accident and emergency department here four years ago on a Sunday afternoon because he was so desperate that otherwise he would kill himself. But it wasn't until the following morning that he was seen by a mental health nurse. Well, today's report makes it abundantly clear that had he been treated sooner and better by both the hospital trust and the neighbouring mental health trust, he'd be alive today, possibly. An acclaimed author and academic, Stephen Foster was 48. He didn't have a history of mental illness, but in 2011, his body was found in this room near Norwich. Three days earlier, at the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital, he had to wait 16 hours before he was seen by a mental health nurse. The continued wait, he interpreted as them not caring about him because he wasn't worth caring about. So the longer he waited, the more suicidal he felt. Uh, indeed, yes. And in, in sometimes in extreme moments, he felt that uh, at one point he tried to leave and was threatening to throw himself under a bus. His partner, Treza Azapadi, was with Stephen that night. She says the Norfolk and Suffolk Mental Health Trust and the Hospital Trust let them down badly. The Parliamentary and Health Ombudsman today agreed. Better treatment by both trusts, it says, may have resulted in a different outcome.